Welcome to I Love Pharmacology. Today in this session, you will going to learn about side effects of beta two agonists. So coming to the side effects which are caused by beta two agonist. To give an example of beta two agonist, the example is easy example to remember is albutamol, which is used in treating bronchial asthma so the side effects which are caused by them are muscle tremors tachycardia hypokalemia restlessness hypoxemia and metabolic effects we'll see individually how the individual side effects will occur with beta 2 agonist so usually this beta 2 agonist side effects are unwanted effects which are dose related why this side effects will occur mainly due to the extra pulmonary beta receptor stimulation means those receptor present outside the respiratory system will be stimulated to cause the unwanted effects so these side effects are not common with the inhaled therapy but it is quite common with oral or intravenous administration so coming to the muscle tremor will occur due to the stimulation of beta 2 receptor in the skeletal muscle which is more seen in elderly patient as well as patient with COPD and one thing you have to remember about muscle tremor is it is the most common side effect of the beta 2 agonist so coming to the tachycardia and palpitation is caused mainly due to the reflex cardiac stimulation secondary to the peripheral vasodilation via beta 2 receptor present on the blood vessels and the second reason is due to the direct stimulation of atrial beta 2 receptor where you all know that the human heart has relatively high proportion of beta 2 receptors and uh, the propo one more proposed uh, reason is as the dose of beta 2 agonist increases it can stimulate the myocardial beta 1 receptor thereby causing tachycardia and palpitation so the third side effect that is hypokalemia is caused mainly due to the beta 2 receptor stimulation of potassium entry into the skeletal muscle so once the potassium entry enters into the skeletal muscle what happens to the potassium and the blood it decreases so it causes hypokalemia so mainly the potassium entry into the skeletal muscle is secondary to a rise in insulin secretion and in case of hypoxemia hypoxia which occurs in acute asthma may predispose to cardiac arrhythmias and following a practically after nebulized beta 2 agonist therapy the significant arrhythmias are rarely seen in clinical practice and one more important thing you should remember about hypokalemia is it is the most potentially serious side effects caused by the beta 2 agonist so coming to the ventilation perfusion mismatch is mainly due to the pulmonary vasodilation in the blood vessels previously constricted by the hypoxia so the blood vessels which are previously vasoconstricted due to hypoxia goes into vasodilatation by beta 2 receptor stimulation so these results in shunting of blood to the poorly ventilated areas and resulting in fall in arterial oxygen tension 
So what will be the effect of beta 2 agonist on partial pressure of oxygen? It is very small. But in case of severe COPDs, the fall in pulmonary, sorry, partial arterial oxygen tension will be large and it's seen rarely. So how to prevent this? By giving a additional inspired oxygen. So coming to the metabolic effects. So it is usually seen after larger systemic doses, after administering a large systemic doses, where we can notice the increase in free fatty acid, insulin levels, glucose, pyruvate as well as lactate. So coming to the summary of side effects of beta 2 agonist, we have a muscle tremor which is most common side effect. We have tachycardia and palpitation mainly due to the direct effect on stimulating the atrial beta 2 receptor as well as reflex effect by increased peripheral vasodilation via beta 2 receptors. Third we have hypokalemia which is potentially a serious side effect. It is a direct beta 2 effect on the skeletal muscle uptake of potassium. Then we have restlessness. Then we have hypoxemia. Then we have metabolic effects like increase in the free fatty acid level, increase in the glucose, increase in the lactate, increase in the pyruvate as well as increase in the insulin. So thank you. For more updates, please like us and subscribe to I Love Pharmacology and do not forget to share as well as press the bell icon. Please do leave your comments below in the comment section.